Last time we told this story, a 17-year-old named Cooper Taylor shocked the U.S. Navy with his invention, a modular VTOL drone that won him more than $23,000 in DOD Innovation Awards. Well, that was just the beginning. Today, Taylor is on his seventh prototype. His goal? To design a drone that can be disassembled, packed into a backpack, and carried anywhere without losing range, payload, or endurance. Right now, his test flights reach 15 minutes, but his latest calculations show it could push 105 minutes at 45 miles per hour. And this summer, he's at MIT's Reliable Autonomous Systems Lab, applying his tilt rotor and modular design ideas to a whole new drone project. This is the next chapter in a story about efficiency, versatility, and a teenager who just won't stop solving problems. Hi, my name's Cooper Taylor, and I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut in the US. The seventh prototype. Taylor's latest design is ambitious, a modular tilt rotor drone that can be broken down, packed up, and carried anywhere. This isn't just about convenience. Portability changes the rules. A system light enough to strap to a backpack suddenly makes sense in places where trucks can't drive and helicopters can't land. Imagine a medic scrambling through earthquake rubble, pulling out neatly labeled carbon fiber pieces and snapping them together in minutes or a glaciologist on an ice sheet, assembling a drone on the spot to scan unstable terrain. Even soldiers could deploy it in remote mountain passes, where traditional air support is too slow or too costly. The idea is mobility without compromise, full aerial capability, in a package you can carry like camping gear. Flight tests and ambitions. Right now, Taylor's tests show about 15 minutes of flight time. Respectable. That's about the range you'd expect from a decent hobbyist quadcopter, enough to scout a park, film a rooftop, or get some dramatic shots before the battery size and demands a recharge. For an early stage prototype, it's not disappointing at all. But Taylor doesn't measure his progress by what's ordinary. Here's where it gets exciting. His latest simulations, a blend of aerodynamics tweaks, weight reduction, and smarter battery distribution, suggest the design could stretch all the way to 105 minutes at 45 miles per hour. That's a leap, not a step. It would push his drone from fun gadget to something edging into professional territory the kind of endurance usually reserved for machines that cost 10 times as much. Suddenly, the drone stops being a toy and starts being a workhorse. Taylor explains it best. Every prototype teaches me what to trim, what to lighten, what to angle differently. The numbers keep improving. That philosophy is written into every test flight. If the frame flex is too much, he reworks the struts. If drag eats away at battery life, he adjusts the angle of the rotors. Nothing is locked in stone. Each launch is a data gathering mission and each landing is a post-mortem. 15 minutes today may not sound revolutionary, but Taylor sees the trajectory, and if his math holds, tomorrow's flights could last long enough to change the very role drones play in the field. Efficiency is everything. VTOL, or Vertical Takeoff and Landing Drones, combine the best of both worlds, but they often use separate motors for vertical and horizontal flight, adding weight and wasting energy. In aviation, efficiency isn't just nice to have, it's survival. And nowhere is that more obvious than in the world of VTOL drones. Most vertical takeoff designs are brilliant at getting into the air, but clumsy once they're there. They rely on multiple rotors to muscle upward. But when the drone tips forward to fly like a fixed wing aircraft, the equation changes. Suddenly half those rotors aren't contributing. They spin, they drag, they drain the battery, all while doing nothing to help the mission. It's like driving a car with a parking brake half on You'll still move forward, but you'll burn through fuel to do it. Taylor's tilt rotor mechanism tackles this flaw directly. By engineering the motors to rotate into forward flight, he ensures that no part of the system goes to waste. Every rotor does double duty, powerful vertical lift at takeoff, and efficient forward thrust once cruising. No idle passengers, no wasted watts. It's a design that wrings value from every single moving part. The insight sounds simple, but the impact is massive. Every watt matters when your entire energy source is a compact battery. Every gram matters when shaving off weight can mean the difference between 15 minutes and an hour in the air. Taylor's drone doesn't squander either. By refusing to accept waste as just how drones work, he's outlined a principle that could shape the next generation of UAVs. Efficiency as the first and not final priority. The power of modularity. If efficiency is the soul of Taylor's design, Modularity is its superpower. Most drones are born with fixed identities. A camera drone is a camera drone. A cargo drone, well, is a cargo drone. Their frames are locked, their payloads limited, their purpose is singular. Taylor didn't buy into that. Instead, he asked a deceptively simple question. 
Why shouldn't a drone adapt to its mission the way a multi-tool adapts to its user? That question led to a design where wings, tails, and payload ports aren't permanent fixtures, but swappable modules. Planning a search and rescue mission in the mountains? Snap on a thermal imaging unit to scan for body heat under the trees. Conducting a scientific survey over wetlands? Attach a suite of environmental sensors tuned for air quality, humidity, or soil chemistry. Delivering supplies to a remote outpost? Load up a small cargo bay and let the tilt rotor do the heavy lifting. The modular approach makes the drone less like a single-purpose aircraft and more like a Swiss army knife with wings. One frame becomes a dozen different machines, depending on the job. And because every component is 3D printed, it's not just versatile, it's affordable. Break a wing in the field? Print a new one overnight. Need a custom sensor mount? Sketch it and have it ready by morning. For Taylor, modularity isn't just a convenience, it's resilience. A drone that can rebuild and reconfigure itself isn't locked into one future. It evolves with the mission and with the imagination of whoever carries it. Modularity equals versatility. In the traditional drone market, versatility usually means compromise. You can buy a camera drone that's excellent at capturing video, but useless at carrying cargo. Or you can invest in a cargo drone that lifts impressive loads but can't do precise survey work. If you need both, you buy both. And maybe a third drone for thermal imaging and another for environmental sensing. Before long, you're not running a fleet but managing a storage closet of single-purpose machines. Taylor's design flips that model on its head. Instead of buying five drones for five jobs, you buy one frame and simply reconfigure it. Search and rescue one day, agricultural survey the next, supply delivery the day after that. By swapping out wings, tails, and payload modules, the same aircraft transforms into whatever tool the mission requires. The savings aren't just financial, they're logistical. One drone means fewer batteries to manage, fewer cases to transport, and the fewer training hours needed to operate it. That's why Taylor's prototype is catching attention. It's not just another drone competing in a crowded field of gadgets with slightly better specs. It's a platform, a foundation, that can support entirely different missions without needing to redesign the aircraft from scratch each time. The takeaway is simple, but powerful. Modularity multiplies value. With one adaptable airframe, users aren't locked into today's needs alone. They're buying into a system that can evolve tomorrow, turning a single drone into a fleet in disguise. One-fifth the cost. Here's the kicker. Innovation often comes with a price tag so steep, it locks out everyone but governments and corporations. Most commercial VTOL drones that offer long endurance and modular payloads start around $25,000 and that's before you factor in maintenance, spare parts, or custom configurations. For a small research team, a volunteer rescue unit, or a startup running on grant money, that kind of price is a non-starter. Taylor's prototype, by contrast, comes in at roughly one-fifth the cost. Around $5,000 buys a system with comparable performance and in some cases, even more flexibility. That cost difference is seismic. Suddenly, the idea of equipping every mountain rescue team with a drone or arming small agricultural cooperatives with aerial survey tools goes from fantasy to practical reality. Affordability means access, and access means impact. Taylor frames it in human terms. If I can make this affordable, then more people can use drones for real problems, not just big companies. That's the heart of it. His project isn't about building a luxury gadget for enthusiasts with deep pockets. It's about democratizing aerial robotics, lowering the barrier to entry, so that small organizations and local responders have the same kind of tools that, until now, only elite institutions could afford. One-fifth the cost doesn't just make Taylor's drone cheaper, it makes it disruptive. It changes who gets to use advanced UAV technology, and by extension, who benefits from it. The MIT chapter. This summer, Taylor isn't slowing down. If anything, he's accelerating. Instead of taking a break, he's stepping into one of the most prestigious proving grounds in the world, MIT's Reliable Autonomous Systems Lab. It's the kind of environment where cutting-edge robotics and aerospace research aren't just concepts on paper, they're daily experiments running in high-tech chambers, filled with sensors, robotic arms, and prototype drones. For Taylor, it's not just an internship. It's a chance to test his ideas under the scrutiny of a global leader in engineering. His tilt-rotor mechanism and modular approach aren't confined to his garage or personal prototypes anymore. They're entering a space where the stakes are higher, the experiments are tougher, and the questions are sharper. Can the same principles that made his drone efficient and adaptable also improve entirely different systems? That's what he's here to find out. Taylor puts it in his own words. I wanted to see if the principles I'm working on, modularity and efficiency,
could help other systems, not just my drone. It's more than ambition. It's a test of universality. If his design philosophy holds up, in the rigorous world of academic research, it validates his teenage innovations on a stage far larger than local test flights. What started as an experiment with 3D printers and spare parts is now crossing into the halls of one of the most influential research institutions on Earth. This isn't the finish line. It's the launch pad. Affordability unlocks access. It's one thing to innovate. Anyone with resources can push the envelope of technology a little further. But it's another thing entirely to democratize that innovation, ensuring it doesn't solely live in labs, corporate offices, or the hands of a few wealthy organizations. Affordability is the bridge between invention and impact. Without it, the most brilliant designs risk becoming luxuries, admired but rarely used where they matter most. Taylor's drone addresses that gap head on by keeping costs low, nearly one fifth of traditional VTOL aircraft. He isn't just making a cheaper machine, he's shifting the boundaries of who gets to fly. First responders in underfunded rural departments, environmental researchers working with limited grant money, volunteer disaster relief groups that can't call in helicopters but could carry a backpack drone into the field. These are the people who stand to benefit when advanced aerial robotics stop being a privilege and start being a tool. That's why this project matters, because access changes everything. The moment technology reaches beyond the elite and into the hands of everyday problem solvers, its potential multiplies. A single affordable drone isn't just a gadget, it's a force multiplier, giving small teams the same kind of reach and insight once reserved for powerful institutions. The takeaway is clear. Affordability doesn't just lower the price. It raises the ceiling of possibility. It transforms drones from specialized machines into everyday tools for solving real world challenges. Why it's vital? Step back for a moment. It's easy to get caught up in the technical details, the rotors, the modules, the flight times, but why is any of this vital? Why should anyone outside the world of drone enthusiasts or engineers care about Taylor's seventh prototype? The answer comes down to three deceptively simple breakthroughs. First, his tilt rotor mechanism leveraging 3D printed parts solves a core inefficiency of VTL flight. No wasted motors, no excess drag. Instead, every rotor contributes across both takeoff and cruising, squeezing every ounce of power out of the limited batteries. That's not just an upgrade. It's a shift in what small drones can achieve when energy is scarce and endurance is everything. Second, his modular design rewrites the rulebook for adaptability. A single airframe can serve dozens of missions, a thermal camera scout in the morning, a sensor platform by afternoon, and a supply carrier by nightfall. The same machine shapeshifts depending on what's needed, multiplying its usefulness without multiplying its cost. And third, the low price point changes the conversation entirely. At one fifth the cost, of existing systems, Taylor's prototype puts advanced drone capabilities in the hands of those who need them most. Think, firefighters cutting through smoke to find survivors, scientists, surveying fragile ecosystems or aid workers, delivering supplies to regions where roads don't reach. In short, Taylor isn't just building drones, he's reshaping what drones could be used for, expanding them from niche tools into accessible platforms with the potential to save lives, advance science, and connect communities the world too often overlooks. From a $23,000 award to a seventh prototype, from high school projects and a home garage to the esteemed labs at MIT. Cooper Taylor is proving that innovation doesn't wait for age. He's designing a drone that's not just fast or cool, but useful, efficient, and affordable. The next step, scaling his prototypes into real world missions. And if his track record is any sign, this teenager might just change the way drones are built forever. From medical deliveries to disaster relief, this drone bridges the gap between industrial and consumer technology. No prior VTOL drone in published research has combined this type of tilt mechanism and modular design. I'm setting a new standard here. My goal is to make advanced drone capabilities accessible to everyone. What do you think? Could modular, affordable drones like Cooper's change the way we handle emergencies, science, and everyday logistics? Drop your thoughts in the comments, we'd love to hear your take. If you enjoyed this update, don't forget to like the video and share with a friend, because this is just one story in a larger future of innovation we'll continue covering here. Thanks for watching, stay blessed, and stay curious.